Hey, hello and welcome. It's me, JP, and it's JP's product pick of the week. <laughs> Look, there's two of me. What is that guy doing there? Uh, so here we are again, and it is time to take a look at a very cool new product. Before I tell you what that product is, I'm going to kind of tell you what that product is. And the way I'm going to do that is by encouraging you to head on over to this URL. That is the QR code that'll take you there. This is the URL. And uh, if you head there, the reason I'm encouraging you to do that is that you can watch the show from inside the product page, A, and B, you'll get a discount. In fact, let's take a look at it right now. Here is the product page. And if I refresh right about now, we should see 50% off. It's just bonkers, 50% off on this product. Uh, So go there, watch the show from in there. You can even see there's the little uh, thumbnail. Click on that uh, and you'll be watching. Oh, look, there's the full size one. Watching from inside of there as we talk about this great new product. Uh, So next thing I'm going to do is actually head on uh, over to my time machine and ask Lady Ada to tell us a little bit about this product herself. Lady Ada, take it away. This is an NPR Gator Breakout. So uh, I thought this was a good idea because we have these plug and play um, STEM QT boards and I like them a lot. And uh, I wanted to update the NPR 121 because I've been updating all of our sensors. Um, and this one I decided to update two ways. One, I'm going to update the basic breakout, but I also wanted to update it to have um, alligator friendly pads. Of course, I forgot my alligator clips upstairs, but uh, you can just imagine uh, you have alligator clips uh, that you can connect onto these large pads very easily and then connect that to your uh, conductive material, whether it's fruit for you know making a banana piano or um, copper tape or conductive nylon or metal or spoons. Um, so people are like, what, what do you want to connect those pads to? Uh, this copper tape works great. So we, ha- we stock uh, copper tape and copper material. So um, you can use this as your capacitive touch pads and then connect it with an alligator clip uh, for a no solder experience. And then, uh, yeah, the NPR 121 just works really well. Uh, it is discontinued, but I'm still able to get a lot of these chips. They're not really discontinued. And there's also companies making a uh, pin compatible version. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, you can even touch multiple pads at once. It's nice and smart. Um, this, the IRQ LED, uh, the IRQ has a little red LED so you can see when pads are touched. You can change the address to connect more than one. And then, of course, it's STEMI QT compatible. So you just plug and play it with these uh, quick or STEMA boards. So I think you want to make like musical instruments or user interfaces. These chips, like they do everything for you. They do the calibration on boot. They, you know, slowly track when humidity changes the the capacitance of like the just, you know, PCB material. Um, It's so easy now to make super fast capacitive touch interfaces. So uh, no solder, plug and play, alligator clippy. Uh, it's got that beautiful black and gold look. Yeah, and since it's STEMA QT, you can um, use this with your set of things you already use. Like you hey, pair this with a cutie pie, and yeah. now you've got a USB to capacitive touch. Pretty input. cheap, too. Yeah, really and easy. And, like, a lot of these things are used in almost like, okay, we're going to use this in, like, a museum display. and like Very common because it's actually, they last longer because there are people bashing buttons. The buttons die. Yeah. Uh, capacitive touch, you know, they make a big stainless steel pad and that yeah, lasts a lot longer. Yeah, last forever. Okay, and that is new products. Hang on, I know, I know my audio is out, but... Uh... That's right. I'm going to go grab mine right now from that audio, uh, from that from that mystery cabinet of wonders. I'll be right back.
All right, yes, I've got it now. So that is today's product pick of the week. It's the MPR 121. It's a capacitive touch gator breakout in Stemma QT format. And what I'd like to do is show you uh, some, uh, some, some action with it, a little bit of a demo. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, head on over to my down shooter. You can see it right here. And let me uh, pop myself into the corner. Actually, before I do that, can I, uh, let me hide me for a second. Uh, I just wanna show you, you'll see, uh, ask and you shall receive. Lady Ada said you could hook this into a cutie pie. Uh, and then run it to the MPR 121 for capacitive uh, touch sensing. And that's what, exactly what I've done right here. Um, also, a quick aside, it is windy here today and my little whirly gig on the top of the shop is spinning and squeaking. I gotta get back up there and, and uh, spray it uh, with some lubricant. So sorry, you're gonna hear some squeaking today. Uh, all right, so here I've got this little demo and what's going on is the MPR 121 is handling all of the difficult stuff. So it does calibration on boot up, depending on what kinds of essentially antennas you've got hooked up to the pads. You can use the pads just as they are, and it does the calibration for every pad individually. So you'll see here, I've got uh, about, what, four alligator clips, these little, I like these little convenient short alligator clips for this type of usage, and I have them touching some copper tape. So I've laid down some adhesive copper tape uh, and then I've covered them because one thing I wanna show is that this is not um, based on a contact per se, it's based on your capacitance and these are acting as antennas. So I don't need to close a contact, I don't need to hold a ground pin necessarily. Uh, I think you can sometimes and that can help. But So check this out, I'm gonna to touch uh, this little Mickey Mouse uh, backside of an old business card and I'm gonna switch a a uh, little strip of LEDs that I have in this box here for some nice diffusion, and it'll go red. Uh, if I touch old Goofy there, we get blue. Jiminy Cricket is this uh, warm white. These are actually RGBW LEDs. And if I can sort of, let me use my pinky, if I get in there and touch that number 10 one, that turns it off. Uh, nine is sort of a magenta. Uh, five is a purple. And then I've got a lemon here. If I touch this lemon, you'll see it goes to yellow. So let me move my camera a little. You can see uh, that's just the, the gator clip, alligator clip, running to the stem of this uh, Meyer lemon. Looks kind of like an orange, doesn't it? Touch that and I'm changing the light colors in there. Uh, so it's very, very versatile what you can use. Uh, I haven't tried graphite. I think you may be able to get away with like some really thick uh, pencil drawing graphite. You may be able to use the uh, conductive paint not sure, haven't tried that one. Uh, I think you can use aluminum foil. There's a lot of things you can use as your capacitive touch antenna, which makes for some like really nice, big, customizable interfaces. You'll see it's uh, pretty responsive. I'm moving it pretty quick here. Um, you can also use this as an input for things like MIDI keyboards and visualizers. I showed a project last week on my workshop show where I took one of these and I and I connected it to this cardboard box temporarily here, and I just have some screws running to each of those uh, little uh, alligator clips, and so now I have t uh, 12, it's 12 inputs you can use that act sort of like keyboard HID commands that I was using to change a, a visualization program. Um, so one other thing I wanted to show is if I jump over to Adam here, you'll see as I touch the pads, uh, it's gonna, Let's see, do I need to update that? Let me, let me pull up Adam. It might not wanna work when it's in the background. Uh, let's see, there you go. So as I touch pads, and I can put that into the bottom corner there, uh, you'll see it's gonna alert me. You've touched pad 11, white, uh, pad eight, light blue, pad zero is red, uh, pad six is yellow. And, and if I reach in there like before, you'll see there's salmon. I was happy with that color. Looks more salmon-y in real person in real life. Uh, so all of these are activated here. And uh, what I wanted to do is show you a little bit about how that code works. So this is based on one of our pieces of example code that you can get in the learn guide. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm importing some libraries. Oh, <laughs> I'm just gonna say, I see in the, uh, in the chat on YouTube, poor Kevin Went said that noise is making my teeth hurt. I know, it's horrible. <laughs> that squeaking uh, whirly gig on the top of my shop is, uh, 
uh, I didn't know it was going to be this windy today. I should have dealt with it. All right, I'll be up there after the show with some, uh, with some oil, clean, uh, getting rid of that squeak. So here in the code, you can see I'm importing some libraries like time, the board for some pin definitions, bus IO so that I can set up the I squared C bus. Uh, this, this little guy works on I squared C. So it uses our little Stemma QT connectors um, and it allows you to plug it in and out of any board that can use I squared C. Uh, then I'm importing NeoPixel and I'm bringing in the MPR121 library. That's the library specific to this chip for this capacitive touch board. Create the I squared C bus, create the object for the MPR121. And then I'm setting up some NeoPixel stuff here, some color definitions and some little uh, arrays or lists here that I can refer to. And then here's the main loop. So what happens is during the main loop, we just go through and uh, iterate I to equal zero through 11. And on each iteration, it's just checking MPR121I, which would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up through 11, value. And the value is either this thing is being touched or it's not being touched. Uh, and then I'm filling the pixel color based on that and sending this little print statement. And then I do a little bit of a debounce with this uh, time sleep. So really easy to set up. Um, I wanted to show you, if you head back over to the uh, Chrome page and uh, head down... Like all of our product pages, you'll see there's a learn guide link you can click there. If I click that, this will tell us about, uh, about the board, the pinouts. There's a address jumper that you can solder if you want to switch which address this is using in case you have two of them. So you could get up to 24 uh, touch um, interface elements in one project. And then if we jump over to the downloads page, you'll see here is the data sheet for this. It's a free scale uh, semiconductor uh, product, the MPR121. And it talks about its operating uh, principles, the voltages it uses, the pins it has, uh, typical applications, PC peripherals, MP3 players, remote controls, mobile phones, lighting controls. So, you know, things like uh, touch lamps where you can just touch the, the side of a lamp and get it to turn on and off. Uh, this might be useful for a case like that where you want to build a NeoPixel lamp where you can change the colors depending on uh, where you touch the lamp on, on separate sections of, of metal perhaps, and, uh, and so on. It also mentions that it's uh, possible to use it as a single capacitive pad, so it'll read all 12 inputs and allow it to be used as a single pad. And imagine you can also do some things with uh, multiple plates, separate plates that you can use to do things like X, Y motion. So there's a lot you can do with capacitive touch. Like Lamore said, it's very cool uh, in sort of ruggedized environments like museums and theme parks because there's no buttons to break. There's no things with a, uh, with a, with a clicky mechanism in, in them that's going to take a beating after 100,000 or a million button presses, which happens probably in about two days in an amusement park if something's at kid level. Uh, so that is the product of the week. It's this... Let me, let me pull this up right here as we, uh, as we head on out. There we go. Uh, once again, head here if you want to go get this bananas 50% uh, off right now on the live stream. What, is that? what does that bring it to? It is $3.25. Get two. You can't lose. You can get up to 10 of them right now if you want to. Uh, and that deal will last during this show. And then we'll have a a little grace period after the show where you can put stuff in your cart and hit go. So it won't stop right at the end of the show. Uh, so that, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to pull this one apart so I can place it on my pegboard. So I'm going to peel off these uh, little alligator clips. Let me grab a Stemma QT connector so I can peel that off of there right now. There it is. That is my product pick of the week. It's the MPR121 12-key capacitive touch breakout board made for Gator Clips. And it is Stemma QT, so I can plug in some Stemma QT cables right here. Did I get that one upside down? Let me plug that in like that. I forgot to make a little hang tag for that, so here's my improvised hang tag. Uh, Stemma QT connector <laughs> connecting the whole thing up. I'm going to place that on my Stemma QT board of goodness. That is my product pick of the week, the MPR 121 Capacitive Touch Gator Breakout Board. So go pick one up, why don't you? That's going to do it for today's JP's product pick of the week. Thank you so much for stopping by, and uh, I will see you next week.
Bye-bye, everyone.